Um, I'm Colleen Moore and I'll be telling you about JavaWorks Express um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what we're actually going to be going through today. So today's agenda, we're going to focus on um, what DriveWorks is. I'll give you a little bit of background on that. Um, what is DriveWorks Express specifically, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, how much does it cost? How do I get it? And then how do I learn more and how can I get certified? Um, and don't worry, we will be going through a little bit of DriveWorks Express today too. Um, I'll show you a little bit about how that actually works. Um, and we'll run, run through one of the sample projects. So to get started, um, DriveWorks, I'm sure some of you might know, um, they're a company based out of the UK. Um, they're in Manchester and actually next week was supposed to be their DriveWorks world. They're hosting it um, virtually for everyone um, and you can attend that free of charge no matter who you are. Um, you just need to go onto their website and get registered. So um, they're, they were going to be hosting it in Manchester this year, but unfortunately due to the circumstances, they're not going to be able to. So I just wanted to note that they are a Microsoft partner, um, Silver Application Development Partner. Um, so Microsoft sees the value in them. They decided they wanna par partner with them. Um, and same thing with, uh, Oh, and you know what? I think you guys can't see my screen right now. So I apologize for that. Okay, there we go. I apologize again. I think the, the poll kind of took over. Um, so, so let's go over this again. So this is uh, DriveWorks, they're a Microsoft partner. They're also a certified gold product uh, SolidWorks also sees the value in them. They wanted to partner up um, and get this DriveWorks Express pushed out to customers uh, free of charge. Um, so the DriveWorks is automation for similar but different designs and orders. Um, they automate the creation of manufacturing documents and data, including SolidWorks parts, assemblies, and drawings. Um, and then you do get the three levels of automation with them. The base level that we're going to be talking about is DriveWorks Express. Um, then there's solo and there's pro and each one of those packages, you know, you kind of start increasing in capacity of what you can do with them. Um, so you will find limitations with Express, but let's say you start running through it um, and you decide this is great for my company. Um, it's really been working well for us, but we want to take it to the next level. Maybe it's time to start looking into solo and pro and starting to have those conversations. Um, so Next, what is DriveWorks Express specifically? It is the easy to use design automation tool um, located inside of every single license of SolidWorks that allows you to quickly and accurately create multiple variations of your SolidWorks parts, assemblies, and drawings. So if you offer many different product options or every customer order is made to order, then DriveWorks Express or DriveWorks in general is probably right for you. Um, and DriveWorks can help you capture your design roles, recreate variations of existing designs, reduce repetitive tasks, save time and improve product quality. Um, so it's as simple as filling out the form, creating new variations of your parts, um, assemblies and drawings and you can see down here um, on the bottom of the screen um, you start out with a master model um, you'll fill out your form which I realize that this is uh, fairly difficult to see right now since it's so tiny but once we move into um, showing you DriveWorks Express you'll be able to see it a little more clearly um, and then you can quickly and easily pop out these different variations of your design. You see we're working with a scissor lift. Um, we can change you know, the, the height, um, the length and the width of that scissor lift. Um, maybe a couple other options on it as well um, and push that right out to the, to the manufacturing floor. Okay. So next you might be wondering, what can I actually control with DriveWorks Express? Um, so many designs follow rules based on experience, company standards, materials used, or manufacturing methods. Um, and SolidWorks is great because it lets you capture some of those rules with, with ge geometric relationships, equations, and design tables. 
Um, but Driveworks is going to use a little bit of a different approach. You can actually easily capture and reuse all of your design and manufacturing knowledge, take away that tribal knowledge, um, and generate new variations of your products over and over again in minutes instead of hours or days. That's the big takeaway here. Um, so you can, you can, like I said, capture that with dimensions, features, and custom properties. Um, you can even capture your drawings and have them push out. Um, and then, you know, really free up your design engineers from those repetitive tasks um, so that they can focus really on, on more product development and maybe even process improvement than the, the drafting that they're, they're used to doing these, these same products, but just a little bit different over and over again. So um, everyone wants to know how much it costs. Um, we don't wanna go and spend our stimulus check all in one place. Um, so it, it's free. DriveWorks is offering this up for free, DriveWorks and SolidWorks together, um, so that you can um, really make the most of it and, and get, a, get a good understanding and start making a difference in your workplace. Um, and so you might not even realize it, but when you purchase a license of SolidWorks, you actually received a free version of DriveWorks. Um, and DriveWorks Express comes with every single license, like I mentioned before, of SolidWorks, and that's standard, professional, and premium, whether you're um, working on a network license or standalone. Um, doesn't matter which one it is. Um, so then I wanna talk a little bit about how you actually get it. Um, so it's it's a super simple process. DriveWorks likes to hand out these, um, these coasters um, at different events um, that kind of walks you through the steps of how to do it. But I'm gonna show you today how to do it. And you'll have to bear with me, I apologize. I'm having a slight technical difficulty with this video um, and I need to just swap on over to the other screen. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is actually make sure that you have SolidWorks open. Um, so, you know, whatever version of SolidWorks that you're going to be using, 2020 is what I'm using. You'll go into tools, find express products, and then go right over to DriveWorks Express and select that. So it'll open up this dialog box for you, um, tell you a little bit about how you can access tutorials and learn more. Um, and go to my.solidworks.com slash express. It gives you the link right here. And you'll see that I'm already logged in. If you're not logged in, you'll need to make sure you do so. Um, it'll verify some of your SolidWorks information, like your serial number, the version, and what product you're actually choosing, the express product today. Um, but then it'll populate your product code for you, and you can go ahead and select that. Right-click and copy. And then we'll move right on back to SolidWorks, where we can enter that product code right into the dialog box. Select OK. And then it'll automatically open up DriveWorks Express for you in the right hand pane there so you can start automating. Alrighty. So let's go over that one more time. So it's as simple as opening SolidWorks, go to Tools, Express Products. DriveWorks Express, click on the link and log into My SolidWorks. Make sure you're logged in. Um, copy the activation code, paste it into the product code box and click OK, and then start automating. Um, so I did also attach a handout to this webinar, um, which we can go over at the end of the session if you're not able to find it. Um, and it'll walk you through how you can, how you can activate DriveWorks Express um, on your own machine. So um, the next thing that I wanted to go over is um, we have some options for learning more. Um, so let's go over YouTube first. I'll bring that on over. Just a moment. So with YouTube, DriveWorks Express actually has their own channel. Um, and you're gonna be greeted with the, the homepage to start, but um, 
here, let's pop out of here. So you're first going to be greeted with that homepage, um, but there are tons of videos that they offer um, for learning more about DriveWorks. Um, there's there's um, some quick tips, and a lot of these videos are, you know, a minute long, less than five minutes. Um, so they're really quick and and get to the point um, and help you learn what you need to do to get moving forward with your project. Um, but then let's say we want to learn a little more about capturing a feature. Let's type in capture a feature here. And you want to make sure you do it here on the channel rather than up here in the search bar. That will just search all of YouTube and um, you know, be a lot to filter through those results. But if you search right on the channel, capture a feature, we'll be able to find some videos pretty quickly on how to capture a feature. That first one, capture a feature, is a great video teaching you how to do the basics of, of capturing that. So um, next um, in my list is uh, tutorials. So we'll pop on right over to here. There are four tutorials that um, DriveWorks Express offers outside of uh, the certification tutorial, which we'll, we'll speak about a little bit later. Um, so it, they give you the instructions right here. All you need to do is um, download and install the, the zip that they give you, um, and then go ahead and open up the PDF, and it'll take you through step-by-step um, exactly what you need to do to, to get this project going um, from setting up your, your DriveWorks project, which is called a database, to actually completing the project and then you have your, you have your completed scissor lift assembly or whatever it might be. Um, so finally, after, after going through those tutorials and everything, you might want to take a look at some sample projects. Um, and you might be wondering, okay, why do I really need to to take a look at sample projects. But what's really awesome about the sample projects is you, these are created by DriveWorks and you really get a chance to learn from the experts. Um, so download those sample projects, take a look at them, dig into their rules and figure out exactly how they set everything up. If you have any questions or, you know, wanna do something new and cool with, with your own personal projects, um, then you can really start digging into those and and uh try to learn from them Alrighty, so we'll pop on right back over to our powerpoint so um how do you get certified um what i really want to make clear is that this is a super simple process um you should be able to complete everything within three hours driver likes to say three steps three hours um, and so the first thing you're going to do is um, follow a tutorial, and it's actually this right here that I'm that I'm sharing on um, the right hand side of the PowerPoint. Um, it's going to be a cupboard. Um, it's fairly simple, um, and it's easy to follow. There are tons of free resources, like I showed you in the YouTube videos, um, on the DriveWorks Express website, the DriveWorks help files. Um, that'll that'll help you enhance your learning and grow your skills. So let's move on. Oh, actually, I want to show you quickly where you find that tutorial. So we'll go back into here. So what you want to do when you when you go to when you go to that tutorial, um, just look up DriveWorksExpressCertification.com, um, and it'll point you towards downloading your tutorial. So you'll just need to quickly fill in some of your information um, and then register and DriveWorks will send over that um, tutorial to you so you can immediately start working on it. So the next thing that you'll wanna do is complete the certification um, and let's pop that up. So once you're finished with this, you'll actually get the chance to um, get this nice little certification worksheet. Um, but what's cool is you can, you can add that to your resume. You can say, I became certified in design automation. Um, and so 
they're going to ask you, have you completed the Driveworks Express sh shelving tutorial? And this is super important because it's it's very similar to, um, let's say if any of you have taken a SOLIDWORKS exam, um, a certification exam, um, they're going to use models so that you can, um, you know, use mass measurements and different dimensional measurements. And those are going to be the types of questions that you're going to find on that exam. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you do complete that shelving tutorial before moving on to the certification. Um, now, it's not timed. It's only 17 multiple choice questions. But again, you should be able to get that completed um, fairly quickly. Um, the three steps, three hours, this is only step two. And now we're moving on to step three, continuing your learning. Um, so we'll go on to the DriveWorks Express website and you can find tons of resources even right here. Um, so this is, this is just for the DriveWorks Express certification um, and you can find learning resources. There's help files. Um, it actually notes that you can press F1 right in DriveWorks Express. It'll pull up the built-in help file for you right there. Um, there's webinars, monthly webinars. Um, I'm signed up for them. They're really nice. Um, little book of rules, which you can request if you want to take your, your projects a step further. Um, sample projects, which we went over. Um, the how-to videos that you can find on, on YouTube. And then the tutorials. Alrighty. Um, the one other thing that I want to mention um, is once you have completed that certification, you'll also get an access to um, or get access to a free 30 day trial of DriveWorks Solo. Um, this is awesome because with that time in the 30 days, you can actually go through. There's a bike frame tutorial that they give you um, and you can take a free certification from there as well. Um, and there are even more resources available for DriveWorks Solo. So maybe you'll maybe you'll get to a point where you're like, you know, DriveWorks Express just isn't doing it for me. I really want to explore what Solo has to offer further than this. Um, go ahead and check it out. Take those 30 days and now is the best time to be doing it. Um, so I just wanted to go over also why you should get certified. So um, Improving your resume is a big one. Um, you can gain an extra qualification to gain an edge on the competition and really stand out from the crowd. Um, another big one is, you know, be that driver of efficiency in your workplace. Stop working on weekends on repetitive tasks and focus on those exciting things like new product development or, like I said earlier, maybe even process improvement is something that really needs to start happening in your workplace, but you just don't find the time. Um, embrace design automation techniques to start working smarter. Um, and aside from everything else, just try to learn something new. Like I said, right now is the best time to be doing it for most people. Um, maybe things are a little bit slower due to what's currently going on in, in our world. Um, and give it a shot. Just try to go through that tutorial. Um, like I said, three steps and three hours for the certification, but um, it's not time. So, do it on your own time and um, I think you'll be on the right track. Um, but don't forget, it's free, totally free. Um, okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and actually take a look at DriveWorks Express. So if you're opening SOLIDWORKS for the first time after you've installed DriveWorks Express, it's not going to be open here. Um, so one thing that you can do is go to the same spot that you went to to activate it. Um, go to Tools, Express Products, and then pop into DriveWorks Express. So it's actually going to open it up. And um, I installed a one of the sample projects so that we could take a look at that together today. Um, so that'll be one that you can that you can find. Um, and it's the cupboard, so it should look fairly similar to what you'd be focusing on in the in the tutorial, but um, that one's still a little bit different, um, but that's what you'll see loaded here. This is the welcome page. Um, so this is where you can open up different databases and all DriveWorks projects are called databases. You'll see that they end in um, a file extension called MDB um, and that's just their, their database file. Um, DriveWorks Solo and Pro files, they're a little bit different. You get groups and projects. Um, but uh, for DriveWorks Express specifically, it's the database file. 
Um, so from here, you can add and edit your project. So let's actually go into this one, or you can run the project, but we're gonna edit it for this case. Um, and you'll see that an assembly pops up right here. So instead of going into file open and let's try to search for that project, let's actually just double click here and it'll pull open that file for me right there. So if I wanna add any more dimensions that I wanna capture, any more components that I want to capture, um, features, custom properties, whatever it might be, I can pull that open and start editing my project right here. So right now we are in capture mode. Remember there's welcome, that's where we find the project. We can see projects right here. That's where we were, where we pulled open the file set and then we're going into capture. So you'll see first all of your captured models and then you can go to your captured assembly structure. So um, when I say capture, I realize I'm, I'm saying that and I didn't necessarily explain myself. So um, if you're not familiar with it, what capturing means is um, you grab any of the components, any of the features, any of the custom properties, dimensions, drawings um, that you want to use within DriveWorks and you're basically just telling DriveWorks, okay, this is going to be part of this project. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes, you want a component to be part of the project, but you don't necessarily need to drive anything on it. You don't need to change a dimension or change a material, change a change a color, anything like that. Um, so they'll still be part of the project. And you can see that right here with a DAO pin. Um, it's not actually selected. Um, the ones that are selected are the items that we're going to be driving different properties of it. Um, so you can see, I always want to have that top level assembly and then anything that is going to be changing throughout the project. And you can minimize these to kind of clean things up for yourself or expand them as needed. Um, and then the next thing that you want to do now, I'm just focusing on the top level assembly for this case. Um, but you can go into the individual files so we could open up the cupboard back. Um, and go into that and find the items that are captured for that and capture different things for it. Um, but right now, like I said, we're focusing just on this top level assembly right now. So we'll go into dim dimensions and features. And you can see there is a feature that is captured, um, but we have a lot of dimensions that are captured for this project. And you can see as I'm moving through them, it actually gives us an address of where it's located. Um, and then we've given it a unique name. Um, so that name right now is already added to it. We're not going to change it. Um, but you can also see here as I'm selecting them, it's almost like selecting it in the feature tree. Um, things are actually highlighting. So you can see shelf quantity. That comes from that shelf pattern. There's a two. I know it's really tough to see and as I zoom, it actually is hiding on me. Um, but there's a two for that shelf quantity and we can, we can actually drive that. So let me hide these items so you can see exactly what I mean. So there's, there's the shelves inside um, and we're going to tell DriveWorks, okay, based on something on our form, which I'll, I'll show you soon, um, we're actually going to be driving the quantity of shelves that populate in here. Um, Okay, so those are dimensions and features. Um, and then we can go into custom properties. So um, this is super important, super cool. Um, you can actually, whatever's in here in custom properties, you can pull them right into DriveWorks because we're not always going to have this be assembly name, assembly width. The order number is not always going to be one, two, three, four. We're going to tell each order what we want what we want to output. Um, and DriveWorks is going to do that for us. So another cool thing I just want to show you really quick is let's say you want to add a custom property, but you're already working in DriveWorks and you don't really want to, you know, be clicking around everything. You always want to minimize your clicks. Um, so let's just go in here and we'll type in test to add a new custom property. We'll hit create. It will automatically capture it for us but then 
The other cool part is it's pushing it directly to our custom properties and you can see it adding it right there. Um, so we'll uncapture that one for now. It'll ask us, it always prompts us, are you sure you want to uncapture this custom property? Because what ends up happening is if you've already created rules to something, um, you will lose all of those rules. So it's nice to have that little extra prompt to say like, did you really mean to make that selection there? So um, I'm gonna hit yes, because I don't want that actually captured in this case. Um, and then we'll move on to drawing and configuration. So um, you can even capture your um, drawings in DriveWorks and you'll just browse for them. This is the top level assembly that's being captured right now. Um, if you have detailed drawings, you would just go into the part and capture it at that level. Um, and you know you will see some limitations with DriveWorks Express, um, just things like scalability in your drawings and um, and moving your drawing views um, and moving your dimensions. So you might need to just do a little bit of cleanup, but it's still life changing the the time um, difference from when you when you are creating something from scratch to now. Um, okay, so like I said, first step is to open up the project. Second step is to do all of the capturing. Third step then is to move into creating your form. Um, so form creation, uh, it's fairly simple. So you, you can just add new um, form controls directly from this form builder. Um, and you can see there are different types here. So there's text box, spin buttons, numeric text box, drop downs. Um, and let's add a new one for ourselves right now. So um, I know that this isn't going to be an option, but let's say that we want to change the finish on the handles. So we'll make a new one called handle finish. Just give it a name. Um, text box and numeric text box, these are all user entered values. So it's just you typing on your keyboard directly into those controls. A drop down um, is going to allow you to add a list. Um, that's pretty self explanatory. That's what we're actually going to use today. Um, a spin button um, that will allow you to increment numeric values typically. Um, a checkbox that's also pretty self explanatory. It's just a checkbox for on or off. Um, maybe we want handles or we don't. Um, but in this case, we're going to do a drop down and I'm going to add. Um, let's say stainless steel, bronze, and brass. I'll hit create. Oh, you know what? I think I actually already created that one as I was testing. So I would hit create. Um, I'll go into here for um, purposes of showing you um, and just edit. So I have added that one to the form, handle finish. It's set up the exact same way as I did before. You can have a check for whether it's required or not. I'm actually going to turn it off so you can see the difference um, because the rest of our controls are required. Um, we'll hit update. Um, and now we've added a new, a new item to our form. So to see, that change to the form. You can see that right here. Actually, I want to go into test. So we'll go back in the form designer. We'll go to test. And I just want to show you where we can see those changes. So um, another important part is you'll see that we get some error messages here. Um, and so with those error messages, it'll tell us, OK, we need to type something in here. Sometimes it's just type in a value like it is right here. So let's give it a value, just a, a random value. I'll give it four, five, six. Um, but then in this case, it's telling us type in a numeric value for a height between 400 and 1500. I can't type in 45. Let's say I'm thinking I need to create this in inches. Clearly it's not working. So let me pop over to this. I see it says 400 and 1500. I realize, oops, that's millimeters. So let's give it a value of 1000. This one's the same kind of deal. And you set these up as you're creating your form design. Um, so you, um, you can set those minimum and maximum values. 
Um, and so this time it's going to be between seven, 700 and 1500. Let's just make it the base 700 and this one for depth between 200 and 1000. So we'll make that the base as well, 200. We can select a material. I'm going to select mahogany, make my door style, style shaker. And these are just, again, just like the top one for order number, it's just telling me to, to select something. And then for handles, I'll select bedroom knob oak. Let's do that. Um, handle finish, you see I, I made that not required because um, it's not actually tied to any rules right now. So I'm not going to worry about that. But um, you, can, you can select something here or leave it unselected. Um, so again, this is just the test. Um, but once we move over to running our project, it's going to look very similar. Um, so you can either set these as your defaults if for some reason you would want that or go ahead and clear them out because right now we're just testing the form. We want to see how it's actually um, functioning for us. So I'm going to clear it out for now and show you the next step, which is rules. So this is your rule editor. It gives you the different types of your rules. There's file names, configurations, custom properties, dimensions, and features. Um, and I will show you, let's go into a file name for right now. We'll edit that, those rules. And you see that back in the summary, it told us we have 27. All 27 are showing up here. Um, and this one right here, it's for the cupboard assembly. I'm going to show you the rule for the cupboard assembly file name. So it's what's going to actually output in place of cover assembly SOLIDWORKS assembly right here. Um, so we can do one of two things. We can either double click on that rule, which I like to do, or um, there is build that option right there, um, which, makes, which, which makes it very clear um, to the user. So you can see that we're going to use from our form order number for the file name. Um, and then we're going to add in text that says position, position number, a dash, and then the height by the width by the depth. Um, and we'll get that outputted here as a result. So um, you can see that there is um, space in between. Um, we're not getting the entire outputted um, text right there, but after we generate a, a part, you'll see that it actually outputs the right file name for you. Um, so that's that's a file name. Let's also go into dimensions. So we'll edit our rules for dimensions. So the height, that's actually pulling directly from the form. Um, it's just pulling whatever the user types in there. Um, and let's see one where we can actually type in an equation. So one thing I will say is if you're familiar with using Excel, um, it's very similar to that. So you can just very quickly type in a formula. So it's going to be whatever the user inputs. Um, and this is for the cupboard assembly right door height. Um, so it's going to be whatever the user inputs for the height, minus two, minus 50. And so those are just equations um, figured out by the user. Maybe it's based on your design standards um, in your company. Um, and you can use those to capture that. And like I said before, get rid of all that tribal knowledge. So that's a dimensional rule. And um, the rest are pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna move into running our project. Um, and the first thing I like to do is make sure that all files are actually closed. I don't want to have this cupboard assembly master model open right now because it could um, conflict with, with what I'm specifying in this uh, form builder. So let's give this um, you know, a unique number again, since that was just on my test form before I'm using that same number. We wanna make sure this is over 400, below 1500. I'm just gonna do the base for all of these to get started. We'll do 200, choose mahogany again, make it shaker style, choose the bedroom knob, knob oak, and then let's hit create. So now is a little bit of a waiting game. 
we're going to let driveworks do its thing um, it's going to run through creating all of these components you'll see it actually resizing you can see it resizing on the dra drawing but you also see that okay i might need to go back and do some cleanup on this file um, and maybe it's rescaling your your views maybe it's repositioning the views repositioning dimensions balloons annotations um, but again it's greatly decreasing your um, your design time that you would have been spending on a very generic or i shouldn't say generic but um project that you know you're you're making those similar but different projects um, so it's doing all of that, all of that tedious work for you. Now you can also see on the right hand side as it's running through these components, it's actually generating a report for each of these components. Um, so if we do run into any issues, which I believe in this project, there are a couple of issues that we might run into, um, but sometimes it's just a limitation of DriveWorks Express. Sometimes it's something you need to troubleshoot, but either way, it's very nice that DriveWorks um, gives you that report so that you can you can go in and try to try to do that troubleshooting and try to make your project a little bit better. So I'm going to let this finish out. It'll take just a couple more minutes, and you'll see at the end that it's made a complete assembly based on the inputs that we selected on the form. And my apologies, I know this takes a little bit of time, but the end result is totally worth it. All right, there we go. So, just kidding. <laughs> Still doing its thing. Okay, now we're complete. So you can see, um, based on all of the specifications that I put in, um, it shows the shaker style doors. Um, it shows mahogany, which I know doesn't look significantly different. Um, I'm not sure if um, that's just the finish for mahogany. Um, it might've been in the master model as well. Um, and then the, the bedroom knob is what it shows here. Um, and you can you can see, I mean, it is it is skinnier than the part that we, or the assembly that we started with before, and um, it saved that part. The other thing to note is the file name. Um, so I added in that order number um, and the text that we asked it to have, so position one, um, and then it's 400 by 700 by 200. Um, so that's nice, so you can you know, maybe send it straight to pur purchasing, they can see right there rather than having to look at their drawings. Um, and it's a nice descriptor to have for your for your file name, but you can really set it to be whatever um, is right for your company um, for your numbering system. So that's what I have for you today. Um, what I want to do really quick is go in here and edit um, and just throw it up to the max. 
Um, and then I want to open it up to questions while this um, wraps up. And if we don't have any questions, I will at least show you, if you haven't found it, how to find your um, handout that I that I added for you. Now let's just choose oak. I'll make it glazed. And we'll choose a D handle instead so you can see the difference. All righty. So let's see if anyone has any questions. It looks like we do have a question here. Um, can you show the drawings from Rusty? Oh, apologies. I did um, hit end here. As this finishes, I can pull up the drawings for you. Are there any other questions in the meantime? And Rusty, if this doesn't finish in time, I can um, I can catch up with you after, so I can show you too. If anybody has a question, you can either go to the questions pane or um, go ahead and raise your hand and I can unmute you so you can ask me whatever you're thinking. Okay, great. Thank you, Julio. Julio says, great presentation. Um, any other questions? Okay. For those of you that are interested, if you want to stay, I will let this um, finish out for the, for the different um, variation on here. Um, but otherwise, um, thank you so much for attending the presentation today. I really appreciate it. Oh, the rules. Let me just take a look at this. Sorry, Rusty. Oh, what amount of time to set up all the rules, et cetera. So, um, it totally depends on the complexity of your project. Um, a lot of rules can be shared so let's say um, you have a file name rule that you that you want to use um, you know you can do a lot of copying and pasting um, i would say i would want to talk to you about a specific project that you're thinking about um, and then um, we can we can kind of talk about what the scope might look like for something like that but for for this kind of project um, I don't know. I would say that you could set up the rules within a couple of days. As long as you have it planned out on the front end. That's really the biggest the biggest piece of it. Um, you have to make sure. I, I like setting up the form first. That would be like my, my first method in all of this. Um, and then capturing my models and writing the rules. Um, but that's just because I think when you set up your form, it kind of lays the outline of the project for you. Okay, so you can see here's the here's the updated file. Um, you can see how it changed even the handles here. We used to have the knobs, now it's the D handles. Um, changed the overall length, width, and height, and 
it did also update the file name up here. So let's go into the drawing for this. So yes, you can 100% see that we have now run into some scaling issues, um, some view position issues. So we will need to play around with the scale here. Um, that is something that you can control with um, DriveWorks Solo and with DriveWorks Pro. Um, it's a little bit differently with both of them. Let's go over here. I still have the other one open. Um, so we'll hit open drawing on this one. And again, not as much view positions, um, scaling a little bit, um, but you can see where the balloons get a little bit overlapped from each other, but they're still there. They're still pointing to the right components. Um, and we really just need to move them around, reposition them, give them a new home. Alrighty. So any other questions at this time? I'll wait just a minute here. Okay, so if not, um, again, I really appreciate your attendance today. Um, it's been great having you. Um, I really enjoyed presenting all of this to you. And if you should have any questions moving forward, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're here, you know, your account manager is there. We're, we're here on support to answer any questions. Um, so go ahead and reach out. Say you have a DriveWorks question and throw them at us and we'll be here to, to answer those for you. All right, thank you again. Have a great day.